fraction multiplication. All right, so in this one, we're literally going to multiply two fractions together. Um, fraction multiplication is by far the easiest thing to do with fractions because you don't have to change anything. You just can start multiplying. So we can multiply right across the top and right across the bottom. So across the top, I have 4 times 6, and I get 24. Across the bottom, I have 3 times 5, and I get 15. Now, this is the same thing they're showing you that they got down here, and that's how they got 24 and 15. They went right across the top and right across the bottom. Then they go from 24 to 8 and 15 to 5. Well, how did they do that? They simplify. Both of these numbers can be divided by 3. So that's how they, they get from 24 to 8. 24 divided by 3 is 8, and then 15 divided by 3 is 5. So this is how they get the 8 over 5. They simplify. But we're not quite done yet because this is improper. We don't want to leave it improper because that's not simplest form. So what we need to do is, since 8 is bigger than 5, we need to figure out how many 5s can I take away from 8, and what am I left over with? So if I take 5 away from 8, I'm left over with 3. Because I could take 5 out, 5 is the bottom of the fraction. That tells me I have a whole number 1 because every 5 pieces is a whole number. So I can take out one whole number. That's the 5 pieces. And then I'm left with this 3. Well, what do I do with the 3? And I'm going to do this kind of funky line here. This is what I'm left over with. I still have 3 of 5 pieces. So I have one whole and 3 fifths. So that's how they got 1 and 3 fifths. Is there a little bit different way to do this? Of course. So I'm going to rewrite this fraction down here really quick just to show you. So we simplified after by dividing by 3. Can I do that before I multiply? Of course you can. So what you have to do is look from top to bottom, so like 4 to 5. Can I reduce those? Can they divide by the same number? No. 3 to 6, can they divide by the same number? Yes, they can. 3 can divide by 3 and be 1. So this is 3 divided by 3. 6 can also divide by 3, and that becomes 2. So I did the same thing. I just divided by 3 like I did out here, but I did it first before multiplying. So this is um, cross-canceling because I'm going across the, the fraction. So I'm going from top to bottom. You can't go across like top to top, it has to be from top to bottom. And it can be in the same fraction, but most likely they're not going to give you a fraction from top to bottom that can be reduced. It's going to be from side to side like this. So now I can do the same thing and I'm going to go across the top when I multiply and I'm going to get 4 times 2 is 8 and 1 times 5 is 5. So I arrived at this 5 eighths a little bit faster. It's the same steps, just sometimes Pen's not agreeing with me here. Um, sometimes it's a little easier to do um, the cross canceling because they're smaller numbers. But it's it's the same steps. I'm still dividing by three if I multiply first and then reduce, or if I reduce first, I have to divide by three and then multiply. So same steps. We just have to decide which one we like, and I'll show you both a couple of times here. All right. So first we'll go with just multiplying straight across. So we have 2, 3, and 9, and 10. So I'm going to multiply straight across. So I have 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 10 is 30. So now I have to make sure I reduce this. Both of these numbers can reduce by 6 or divide by 6. If you didn't see that right away, at least start with 2. They're both even. And then... The answers you get from that won't both be even, so you move to threes. And then you can try fours and fives and sixes, and you keep going until you can't divide anymore. Now, if you notice right away, oh, they both divide by six, that's great because that does save you a little bit of time if you know your times tables. So 18 divided by six is three. 30 divided by six is five. So it is a little faster if I already know my times tables and I know 18 can divide by six and so can 30. So now, I already have my fraction, 3 over 5, and it's not improper. 3 is smaller than 5. This is my answer. So I wanted to show you what it looks like when I do... I'm going to grab a different color here. 
Boop. All right, so I have two thirds and nine halves. So I'm gonna grab a couple of different colors here. So I'm gonna go from top to bottom. So I'm gonna go two to 10. Those can both reduce. Two divided by two is one. 10 divided by two is five. And now I can do the same thing over here. Three and nine. Oh, look, those can also reduce. Three divided by three is one. Sorry, not three. One. And nine divided by three is three. So I could, I could actually reduce twice here. I could go from top to bottom and then top to bottom again. So now I just want to multiply. So I have one times three, and I get three, and one times five, and I get five. So did it really save me any time? No, I still get the same answer. So it's still exactly the same no matter which method I use. It just depends on when you prefer to reduce. Again, cross canceling tends to be smaller numbers. So most students are a little quicker with the smaller numbers than they are with the larger numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and check that and next. Clear, so let's do it one more time here. So we're going to have 5 over 2 times 11 over 3. And we're going to multiply straight across. So we're going to get 55 over 2 times 3 is 6 because I multiplied straight across the bottom. So in this case, and I'm going to bring it up right now, there is no cross canceling. So 3 and 5, they can't cross cancel. 11 and 2, they can't cross cancel because nothing can be divided into both numbers. So there's no reason to do that other fraction or that other method where I cross cancel first because there is no cross canceling. The only option is to just start multiplying. But I do have to figure out how many sixes can I take out of 51. Remember, for every six I can take out, that's a whole number. So if I go through and I list my multiples of six, I just want to see how many sixes do I need before I get I don't want to go over 54, 55. I want to get as close as I can to 55. So now we have 30, 36, then we have 48, and then we have 54. So here are my multiples of 6. And I just counted. So 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 6 more is 18, plus 6 more is 24. And I kept doing that until I got to 54. I don't want to go to the next one because the next one would be 60. Well, that's over 55. I don't want this one. So now I just need to count how many sixes did I use? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know I'm gonna have a whole number eight. And then if I take all eight of those, then that's 54 pieces, because that's what, what we get down here, the eighth six is 54, and I subtract and I have one left. So remember this one is what goes on top of the fraction, and then I put the six, back on the bottom. So this is my fraction, 8 and 1 6. And I want to make sure I click this um, bar over here where we have a whole number and a fraction so that I can type it in correctly. So 1 and 6. Check. Uh, did I multiply incorrectly here? Let's see. 55 and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. Uh oh, did I miss a multiple here? 18, 24, 36, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, I did miss a multiple here. There's a multiple right here that I skipped over. I skipped 42, darn it. So it should have been 36, 42, 48, 54. So that should have been there, and I wasn't paying attention because I know darn well that that's actually 9. So it should have been 9 and 1 6. That was just a silly mistake, but it was just a miscounting. Mistakes happen. You just slow down and go back and say, oh, what did I do? Sometimes it's easier if you go back and you erase everything, and you just restart because um, sometimes it's a little harder to go back and try to retrace your steps. Okay, so let's go four sevens and five six. So we're going to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So we get 20 and we get 42. So I can divide both of these by two, definitely. So I'm going to get 10 
and 21. And 10 and 21, that's reduced as much as I can go. 10 is smaller than 21, so I don't have to worry about it being improper. So now let's look at the idea of cross-canceling real quick, just in case you like that method a little better. So now I want to figure out from top to bottom what can cancel. So 4 to 6, both of those can divide by 2, so I'm going to start dividing by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then I'm going to look at 5 and 7. I can't cross-cancel those. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply across the top and across the bottom. So I have 2 times 5, I get 10. 7 times 3, I get 21. So again, either way, I get this answer. I'm still doing the same reduction. I'm still dividing by 2. I just have to decide which method I like a little better. All right, check. And let's do one more of those. Four and five and ten and seven. All right, so let's multiply across top and across the bottom. And we get 40 and 35. And then I can see it ends in five and zero. So we want to divide by five. 40 divided by five is eight. 35 divided by five is seven. Now remember, eight's bigger than seven. This is improper. So how many sevens can I take out of eight? Well, just one, right? One seven here. And I'm left with one. I have a remainder of one. So taking out this one seven means that I have a whole number one. This one, and I'm going to crisscross here, so hopefully that's not too crazy. It's going to come up here, and that's going to be the top of my fraction. And seven stays on the bottom. So I have one whole because it was eight. I took seven away. I'm still left with one seventh. Because if I take 7 away from 8, I'm still left with 1. All right. So 4 fifths times 10 sevenths. So we're just going to look at the cross-canceling real quick. So from top to bottom, 4 and 7. Well, nothing can divide into both 4 and 7. So I can't cross-cancel those. But if I go 5 and 10, 5 can divide into both 5 and 10. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So now I can just multiply across the top and across the bottom. So I get 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 7 is 7. So I arrived right back at my 7 eighths. Do I still have to turn it into a, a proper fraction? Yes, we can't leave it improper. They don't want us to on this one. They want us to make sure it's completely reduced and an improper fraction won't work. All right, we finished another one, yay.